your bombshell here with you with a great book review. You know me and my book reviews. As soon as I finish them right now, my goal is to get them on here and get them done quickly so I can give them to my friend Wanda, who's also a book reader, and I used to work with her, and it's just something to, uh, I, I just love to read. It's just a great thing to get lost in, especially when you have a romantic heart and you've lost all hope for romance yourself because you think that there's no chance in hell things can ever look up, so it's better to get lost in a book. Now this one is, it, it's, I got this book at the Matt Toon Library Book Fair, and it's called Getting What You Want. It's the first book in the series, and it's drawn me in so much that I have written down the next book in the series so I can find out what happens next. But this one is a uh, Getting What You Want, Know How to Tap into the Secret Yearnings of the Heart. And it's a delightful, heartwarming novel. Kathy Love introduces the stepsisters, three women whose lives are about to take a turn for the wild, the unpredictable, and the absolutely enchanting. In this story, we meet Abby. Note to self. Remind me to have my head examined. What exactly possessed me to come home to Millbrook, Maine, where nothing changes but the weather? Oh, right. A six-month grant to do genetics research at Rand Laboratories. What can I say? I'm a smart girl, and smart girls got what get what they need and get out again. Smart girls don't dream, they settle. And smart girls do not get completely tongue-tied while holding a basket of fried clams when they bump into the most gorgeous man they've seen in 15 years, Chase Jordan. Remind me to have my hormones removed. Chase Jordan, town bad boy rebel with a cause to show up in my dreams unannounced, Oh boy, this is not good, not smart. It's like high school all over again, but in a good way, a heart thumping way. And I have no idea what's gonna happen way, a way that makes me feel like maybe I'm settling for what I have isn't so smart, but really going after what I want is the craziest thing I may ever do. Now, as you can see, when I like a book, I paper clip it and I do these little things called uh, asterisks so I can share these moments with you. I'm trying to find an example here. Uh, next page, Donna. See? So these little asterisks tell me what I'm going to share with you. Um, this book, at first, it didn't hit home with me. Um, I don't like a book that starts off uh, one time and then brings you up to date time later. I like a book that takes us from point A to point B. But this one starts off point 10 years ago or 15 years ago and then modern day. Now she was like me, picked on in high school. I guess maybe that's why it, you know, it, it hit home to me. Um, she had a reputation with the always having her nose in a, in a buried in a book chase nodded up his own beer up to his lip he swallowed and said yep that's her mason looked a bit pr proud of himself so she's still unfriendly pretty much i tried to ask her about what brought her back to millbrook and she answered but she acted like she'd rather be talking to a toad a woman giving our class prettiest eyes the cold shoulder that must have been a first Chase grunted, I'm never going to live that down, am I? Never, Mason agreed. She always thought she was above the people of Millbrook, I think. Abby, that is. Yeah, well, I've had plenty of experience with women like that, and I can tell you they're a waste of time, Mason's voice said with heavy resentment. Chase nodded. Does she still wear those ugly giant glasses and had her hair in a knot in the back of her head? He gestured toward the back of her own, his own head. No, apparently something about the way Chase said that. That single word captured Mason's attention. Oh, no, don't tell me you're attracted to her. Chase was quiet for a moment, looking out into the dark darkness. Not exactly. And I have no clue what just hit the ground here, but something hit the ground, and it didn't sound good. So we're going to the next paperclip. 
And as you can tell, these paper clips are going to take us a while. Okay. Okay. This is silly, Abby declared. Yes, I did have a crush on Chase Jordan when we were in high school, but why on earth would that matter now? I'm a grown woman, and I already have a significant other. She struggled with the name. Ellie, that's her sister, supplied. Of course, Nelson, and I'm perfectly capable of living quite serenely across the street from Chase Jordan. Ellie looked unconvinced. Well, he seemed to be unsettled by you yesterday. It wasn't Chase per se, it was just the whole experience of being back here. Abby gripped her coffee cup in both hands. It was strange, and it made me act strange, but I'm fine now. Ellie, Ellie nodded with her usual acceptance. I'm glad. Do you want something for breakfast? We have bagels and uh, English muffins. A bagel would be great. Abby could hardly could always count on Ellie to accept her explanations. She may not believe them, but she let the subject drop. We move on to the next butterfly, which is on page 44. Really, that's super. Did you realize that this summer is our 15th reunion? You must come. Abby scanned the faces of her old classmates. They all stared back at her as if acceptance to Mandy's invitation was actually important to them. I don't think so, she said. She had no desire to go back and spend the evening with people who couldn't, wouldn't give her the time of day all those years ago. Oh, you really should. You did make... The you didn't make the tenth, and truthfully, Mandy leaned toward her, you didn't miss much. Andrea laughed. Wasn't it Dave Macy's idea just to buy a keg and have the reunion at the ledges, celebrating in the woods like we were still underage? Can you imagine? Abby shook her head. Well, I think Dave Macy's fondest memories of high school happened at the ledges, Gary said. Everyone chuckled, but the year reunion was going to be at the Millbrook Inn. Have you seen it, Mandy asked? Abby shook her head. It's absolutely beautiful. Chase Jordan fixed the place up, and it's amazing. The man has a real gift. Mandy's last statement was the first thing that the group had said that Abby could wrap her mind around. Speak of the devil, Gary said, their gazes all following to where Chase stood slightly in the shadows, watching the group. Abby had the distinct feeling that he was watching her, but she knew she must be imagining things. Chase, Mandy said, do you remember Abby Stepp? A strange, mysterious smile curved his lips. Yeah, I remember Abby. He said the words like they had a hidden meaning that no one knew, but he and Abby would understand. We were just pestering Abby to come to our class reunion, Mandy told Chase. And is she coming? Again, his question seemed to be filled with indowindo. Mandy sighed, glancing over to Abby. We haven't been able to get an answer. Chase looked directly at Abby and cocked an eyebrow. Maybe she could be persuaded. He heat crept up Abby's neck. Why did everything he said seem to have a hidden meaning? The whole situation was making her very uncomfortable. Excuse me, she said. I think I need to get something to eat. It was great to see you, Mandy said. The other women said things along the same lines. Again, Abby nodded and started to walk away, but not before she saw Chase's expression, and he pe appeared annoyed. Page 47. She must be imagining all of the strange responses that she was getting from him. He hadn't paid her any attention to her in school, so why would he start now? And to get you more intrigued, we're going to page 50. After several seconds of driving, Chase broke the awkward silence. I know I had a bad reputation in high school, but I didn't grow up to be a serial killer or anything. Abby shot him a quick, wide-eyed look. What What makes you say that? You're on pins and needles. Even in the dark, I can see yet white knuckles are in front of you clutching the steering wheel. Relax, I promise I won't attack you. I won't even make conversation if you don't want me to. Again, Abby cast him a glance. Why would I mind you making conversation? Chase shifted and he, she swore and she could feel his body heat drifting toward her. I just get the feeling that you don't have much use for the town or the folks in the town. Abby was startled by his candidness and his accuracy. I, she wasn't sure how to respond. She cleared her throat and started again. I don't have a very fond memories of Millbrook. She sh saw Chase nod out of the corner of her eye. Growing up can be rough. Yes, it can, she agreed, but we all grow up. 
and hopefully we get a little wiser. Abby frowned. Do you think you're wiser? Chase laughed and the sound of that D writing, but the still velvety against the vinyl exterior of her car. Damn, I hope I'm wiser because I was a total idiot in high school. Why do you say that? I did terrible in school. I partied too much. I got into a lot of trouble. And you were also good looking, popular, and cool. He laughed again and the sound still filled the duration. Yeah, well, those things can only take you so far in life and certainly not as hard work as it does as intelligence. She was silent for a moment, and then she said something she never said to anyone. Intelligence can take you places, or it can isolate you. We move on. To chapter 5, which would start on page 54. No more, Abby. There hadn't been any Abby, but damn did he want there to be. When he accidentally shined that flashlight in her eyes, caused her to lose her footing, she had felt so incredible in his arms. Her sulky hair had brushed his chin, and what he'd been able to smell the scent of her shampoo. It was simple, clean fragrance, but then mixed in with Abby's own unique scent, she smelled delectable, and he'd been barely able to keep his eyes off her as he drove home that night. She had been so stiff and so uneasy, trying to keep him at a distance, until she smiled, and it had been the only, one small fleeting curve of her mouth, but it had showed what lay beyond the walls that he, she erected around her heart and herself. He then realized that she wasn't aloof because she was snooty, but because she didn't trust easily. She had been hurt, and she wanted to protect herself. He could understand that, probably better than anyone. Damn, he wanted to break down those barriers and see the real Abby. Unfortunately, she had only offered some other guy that opportunity. So you're planning to answer me or just stare at that fry at your holding? Mason's voice pulled him out of his thoughts. Sorry, Chase muttered feeling a bit lame to be caught daydreaming. No, no more Abby, at least not unless she wants to be friends, which I don't think is very likely. Mason frowned. She sounds like too much work anyway. She would be work, but Chase had the feeling she would be worth every ounce of sweat. And he is just amazing in this book. I just got to say that Chase is like the hottest character in this book ever. And you'll see why. <laughs> Page 59. You know, since you've seen my boxers and all, I really feel like it demands that we go out tonight, he said, charming smile, very inviting. There's a story behind that. The dog, which is his dog, Chester, comes to her house, or, which is next door, with a pair of his boxers in his mouth with ch chili peppers all over the boxers as the design. And so he, she decides to take the dog back to where he belongs. Little does she know that it's Chase's house, uh, which is kind of funny in its own way. <laughs> but uh, let's continue on. Abby wanted to say yes, though she was filled with uncertainty. She didn't even want to set up, be set up like she had been that May night years before. She, the, that was one of the pranks that his old girlfriend played on her was he, she told her that they were going to come and pick her up and they never showed up. I just finished my first day at the lab and I need to relax. It'll be relaxing, Chase assured her, just a casual dinner. She wanted so much to accept, but fear wouldn't let her. No, I'm sorry. No strings attached. I know you have a boyfriend. I just want to go out as friends. He yelled up the boxers. This has to got to make us friends, right? I'm sorry, Abby said, and she started towards the steps, but Chase's hand on her arm stopped her. The touch was light, but it felt like a pure shot of electricity jolting through her skin. She looked back at him. Please come out with me tonight. The invitation was so sincere, his pale eyes filled with such earnest that Abby found herself nodding. Great, I'll be over at seven. We move on. Page 71. This is Abby Step. Abby waited for the sarcastic remark, the digging barb, but none came. Instead, there was a flash of surprise and then a smile that revealed that he ha still hadn't gotten over his overlapping front teeth fixed. Abby Step, he said with a shake of his head, I haven't seen you in a dog's age. How have you been? Abby couldn't answer. How could this man stand in front of her and seem pleased to see her again? after all the hurtful and cruel things he had said. 
Page 73. Chase could have kicked himself. Why hadn't he seen it? Why hadn't he realized that as before her cold demeanor was only a defense mechanism to protect herself? He tossed a couple of dollars on the table for Lynn and followed Abby outside. He was relieved to discover that she hadn't made it too far. She stood on the sidewalk a few yards away from the restaurant, looking around like she was trying to decide what to do next. Abby, he walked up toward her but paused her as he held her hand up to stop him. I'm sorry, she said. All the signs of pain had gone from her voice, replaced by aloofness. I shouldn't have reacted that way in there. And I shouldn't have said what I said, but I didn't realize the way you felt. Abby shifted, looking up on the street. Chase wondered if she wished she was home or back in not Boston with that quote-unquote significant other. He wished she didn't want to be any other place, but for some reason the second option bothered him more than he cared to dwell on. She cleared her throat, then said, Dolly, it doesn't matter. Tommy, Paul, and all the others in this town are years and years behind me. It's in the past. Chase took a step forward and paused again. It isn't in your past if it still hurts you. I should have realized why you reacted to Tommy the way you did. Abby gave him a searching look, and even though her demeanor was stiff and cold, he could still see the hurt in her eyes. Why should you have? You don't know what it was like to grow up as one of the ugly stepsisters. You don't even remember how we were teased. You were part of the cool crowd. You had other things to concern yourself with. Man, if she only knew how true that was. He took another step toward her. He was close enough to touch her if he wanted to, but he didn't think she would be receptive to such an overture. But he wanted to touch her, to pull her in his arms and absorb some of the pain that held her so rigid, and she looked like the, she might be just snap. Listen, I think we should just label this dinner a complete disaster, Abby said, with a small smile that didn't lessen the sadness in her eyes. I wasn't cool in high school, and I still think it's safe to say that I'm not cool now. So let's just call it a night. She started towards step past him, and this time he would not, he could not stop himself from touching her. He caught her wrist, noting how fragile it felt in his hand. She turned and looked up at him, and he saw the surprise and replaced pain in depth of her dark brown eyes. Do you want to know something else you're not? He asked her, his voice very rough. Before she could reply, he answered, pulling her tight against him. You're not an ugly stepsister. And he bent to capture her parted lips with his own. And I tell you, this man is full of passion in this book. Let me just tell you. We're going to move on to page 93. 93, okay? There are something about her that was so enticing, far more than any woman he'd met in years, but he couldn't just place his finger on what about it made her so alluring. Physically, she was the definition of striking, but he'd been with women who were prettier. Then he recalled how she felt in his arms. She'd been so warm, so responsive. Other women might be prettier, but no woman had ever set him ablaze with a single kiss. A kiss that he very much wanted to repeat. We move on. Page 99. Okay. Don't say that again. Harshness de deepened his words to a low, ominous rumble. We're too damn old to be calling people silly adolescent names. Abby let out a breath she'd been holding. Nausea roiled in her stomach again. They were too old. Not she wasn't too ugly. Not she had become a different person from that shy, awkward young girl. No, simply they were too old. And adults didn't say such things. Sugar, all I'm saying is if you're lonely and I'm here for you, I will always be here for you. The irritation had left Summer Ann's voice replaced with a sweet purr. That's his ex-girlfriend who causes so many problems in this book. And it's amazing how you would think they would be happy for her and him together. But no, some of their classmates are not. Page 103. Abby frowned. Why are you acting this way? We both know this isn't real. Are you going to try and tell me that you didn't feel anything when we kissed? Yes, Abby said as heat crept into her cheeks. Yes, I felt something, but she couldn't find the right words. She couldn't tell him that even if there was no Nelson, she could never picture herself with him. Chase was magnificent. 
In school, he'd been the most embodiment of beauty and life, and he still was. She could so easily lose herself in him, but he wouldn't ever be satisfied with her. She had intelligence, but that was unremarkable in every other way, in all the other ways that would keep a man like Chase interested. We're just too different. Chase stared at her, and she felt pinned by piercing shards of crystal blue. Then he nodded, maybe, but I swear I felt something between us that could overcome our differences. I belong with Nelson. Why would I ever thought otherwise? Abby didn't know exactly how he meant his last statement, but she wondered the same thing. Why would he want her? I, I think I better leave. Chase didn't respond, and she simply left. Page 104. Now he certainly didn't think the belt was the turn-on for her, and here without it she found him unappealing. No, quite the opposite. If Chase had to guess, she saw the work belt that he had on and re remembered exactly what he was. A blue-collar stiff. Again, he's looking at the differences, she's looking at the differences, but they're not looking at what they have, which is just a once-in-a-lifetime love, really. We're going to move to page 118. Will these two ever get it together? You know, Leslie's voice carried to Abby, returned her attention to the petite woman. The funny thing about destiny is that you can't predict it, You can, and you can't prevent it. When Abby looked back, Chase had vanished with the sunlight. Page 125. Because I'm an ugly stepsister, she nearly stated, but caught herself. That wasn't true. She was no beauty, but she wouldn't think of herself under that label. I just never thought you'd be offering me a compliment after the, how things ended the other day, Abby realized. She didn't want to bring up the subject either, but unfortunately it was already out of her mouth. Chase picked up a stick and began drawing in the grass, and after a few moments Abby decided she had offended him again. Then he tossed down the stick and sighed, I shouldn't have acted that way. Nelson is the man in your life, and you were obviously right when you said we're too different anyway. Our worlds are completely opposite. They are? Chase nodded. Disappointment sat heavy in Abby's chest, and she could feel an inexplicable waterness in her eyes. But you're still the prettiest girl here tonight, he said with that devilish charm. Are these two ever going to get it together? we got to read on. Page 131. Chase offered a weak smile to the spectators and then leaned in to hush her. Abby and I are just friends. That's it. She stared at him for a moment, then blinked her lashes coyly. That's it? He nodded his head once. So can we drop the subject? She smiled broadly. That I can do. That's him talking to his ex-girlfriend who's making sure that they're nothing more than that. Because she's got a hidden agenda. To find out what her agenda is, I want you to read this book. Page 151. Leave it to the stepsisters to long for the unattainable. Wasn't that what stepsisters and Cinderella did too? Shoot for the prince when realistically they should shoot, they should have aimed for the frog. That's what she's telling herself at the current moment. But what I will say, I'll stop right here for a brief moment and to say that uh, it was clever to b play on words with ugly stepsisters, and the step was the last name, and they were sisters. I think this, this author is just, it makes you think. And that's what I like, stories that actually stop, make you think, make you have to work for a little bit to get into the story. Most importantly, creates a story with words that's believable, and you can put yourself there and relate to. He squeezed her fingers. Right about what, baby? I did come here hoping you, hoping you could make me feel attractive, make me feel like there was a man out there who wanted me. I shouldn't have denied it. And that's when things become heated between these two because she breaks up with Nelson. Do, 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 do. Which they have wonderful love scenes in this book. He's very passionate and very... Let's just say that song by Conway Twitty, You Want a Man with a Slow Hand. He is a man. <clears throat> anyway, what was he getting involved in? He wasn't happy with the idea of being anyone's second choice, but damn, he wanted Abby. Could he be satisfied to be her whatever she wanted him to be? Well, let me just tell you, he, she breaks up with 
good old Nelson and works things out with Chase, kind of. Moving on. It's kind of like fun, like a treasure hunt to find the paperclip. Page 181. Then her gaze rose from the coffee to him, and he saw the anxiety darkened her eyes of the color of the liquid in the cup. She wasn't feeling remorse over that invitation, but concerned that he would reject her. That silly, silly woman. I like to add a little comedy. We're moving on to the next paper clip. Page 203. This time, Chase sighed. I remember. He linked his fingers through hers and toward the door. I guess we better get you back before you turn into pumpkins. Abby stopped, jerking him to a halt. What's wrong, he asked. She shook her head. It's nothing. Something upset you. No, it's just me being silly. Chase pulled her against him, leaning his head so he could whisper against her ear. So tell me then. She remained very still in his arms and then pulled back and looked him directly in the eyes. Okay, that's the first time, time someone has made a Cinderella reference to me. And I wasn't the ugly stepsister. They st <clears throat> Chase stared at her for a moment, then pulled her tight against him. When were you ever going to realize that you never were the ugly stepsister? They stood there in each other's embrace for a moment. We better get back. Abby nodded and followed him through the shadows. Page 204. He glanced around the room and found everyone else appeared fascinated with the speech that he, he, as he was. She finished her portion of the discourse and stepped back to let the other guy give his part of the speech. As soon listening to her colleagues, Chase studied her and her thoughts went to graduation day and the valedictorian address. She hadn't been so sophisticated, but she had been the only diff, but had she been the only difference. Had she spoken the same conviction? Had she been excited about her success and her future as she was her research now? Had she seemed so absolutely beautiful and he just missed it? Well, Abby Step, one of the ugly stepsisters, he had listened to and accepted that awful description. He'd been so stupid and shallow. Abby Step was an amazing person, and he was he had that feeling she always had been but he hadn't given her a chance back then. He came out of his musings and discovered her gaze was on him. When they made eye contact, she was rewarded with a huge happy smile. His lips were rosy from his, his kisses, and damn, he was lucky to be with her. But would she be smiling at him like that if she knew the truth about him? Chase wondered. Ooh, what secret does Chase have? Page 210. You were amazing during your speech, he told her. You had everyone in the room captivated. I was captivated. I wanted to understand your research. I wanted to understand you. He's just so sweet. We're moving on. Page 245. The real Chase. The kid that had an abusive dad. The teen that did anything to draw people's attention from his weakness. That little boy. That couldn't. Page 247. She looked gorgeous. Her hair spread over her blanket in the dark ways and the water below them. Her eyes glittered like the star above, and he realized that if he allowed it, this woman would become both the sea and the sky. She could so easily become his whole world. He, she confided in him that she didn't know how to swim. And he made her not only feel confident in the swimsuit that he bought for her by telling her that she looked wonderful and made jokes along the way like, you want me to go out there and, you know, skinny dipping with you? And she's just like, no, there's people out there, you know, timid and shy. And he puts her at ease by taking her out there and keep telling her how good she looks. And then she's out there in the water with him. She doesn't know how to swim and he teaches her. It's, it's just the most amazing moment. Next paper clip. Page 
page 262. Why did I mark this? She had taken Chase's trust and pride and shoved it back in his face. Her stomach lurched and again collapsed onto the office chair, propping her elbow on the desk. She propped her head in his hands and or in her hands and closed her eyes. He told her about his own father, his own childhood, and she knew if he were a father, he would never, never be anything but doting and supportive and active in every part of that child's life. She was such a fool to believe a word of Summer Ann's lies. A stupid, gullible fool. Exactly what she had been in high school. Abby, are you all right? Leslie's concerned voice started her, startled her. She raised her head and gasped at the woman. Le Leslie's eyes widened and immediately came to Abby's side. Lord, girl, you look terrible. What's wrong? Abby touched a hand to her face, then dropped it to her lap and attempted to smile. The gesture seemed to stretch her face and made her feel like she was grimacing. I'm fine. If you're fine, then I'm about to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Now what's going on? Before Abby knew it, Abby was telling the whole story, unable to keep her pain and shame inside a moment longer, and in the vain hope that Leslie would have an answer to this awful dilemma. Leslie sat there for a moment after the whole tale was told, contemplating it. Then, with the true practicality of a mariner, she transplanted, transplanted mariner, that is, well, I don't know if you will ever get Chase to forgive you, but I sure as hell would give Summer Ann, a, Summer Ann that's the ex-girlfriend, a piece of my mind. Summer Ann had told um, I can't, the stepsister there that uh, how could you break up a family until you came back to town? We were going to get back together and that's my that's Chase's son. So she jumps to conclusion and assumes the worst without asking questions, goes off like a loaded gun on Chase. Chase isn't too happy, but in the end, the truth comes out, and it's wonderful for them. Like I said, in books and movies, this stuff comes true. But anyway, page 266. And um, she finally gets her comeuppance, if you will. Summer Ann does. Okay, here we go. I'll, I'll read this part to you because it's one of my favorite parts in the book. Chase pulled his truck into the small dirt lot behind the office. He was surprised to see Summer's car still parked near the building. She usually made a habit of closing down the office for at least an hour to meet Candy Moore for lunch. Actually, he's been counting on that fact. He wanted to go alone for a few minutes somewhere that didn't remind him of Abby. He considered leaving, but decided against it. He did have a few supply orders that he needed to go over with Summer, then maybe go to Birch Hill Pond and do a little fishing, or maybe go to the parched dolphin and get drunk. Just as he reached for the top step and his hand was on the doorknob, a raised, familiar voice stopped him. You lied. It was Abby, and even from the brief sentence, he could tell she was furious. What? Summer Ann asked, her voice puzzled. Don't play innocent with me. Not this time. You know exactly what you did. Abby, I don't know what you're talking about. Abby laughed with a sound brittle and humorless. Why are you still pleading ignorance? You know what you did. You planned it all out. And the plan was perfect, wasn't it? You knew I wouldn't risk hurting Willie. Chase's frowned. What had Summer done? There was this momentary silence when Summer Ann snickered and all the innocence was gone. You were pretty predictable. Yes, I was, Abby said with a measure of self derision And given your past trick... I should have known that I couldn't trust you. Summer snorted. Oh, please don't tell me you're still whining about something that happened nearly 15 years ago. I think it's high time you grow up and move on. Me? I'm not the one who has to resort to lies to get a man. It's time for you to move on. Chase doesn't want you. He does. You told me that Willie was Chase's son. You guilted me into believing that I was hindering your little boy's chance of finding happiness. You are, Summer shouted. If you weren't around, Chase would be with me, and Willie wouldn't have the father, or Willie would have the father that he's always wanted. And I didn't lie about that. The worst part of this whole deceit is that you convinced me to hurt a man who I knew was innocent, who I knew would never reject his own child, but I was stupid and ungullible, and I believed you over what I know about him. I can't blame him for never forgiving me. He shouldn't. But I just want you to know that I'm going to sit back and let him believe it was solely my idea. 
what are you going to do? Summer sound agitated. I'm going to tell him the truth, and somehow I don't think you're going to get that perfect family you were planning on. At least not with him. Again, there was silence. Chase started to turn the doorknob, but before he could open the door, he heard an enraged screech and a loud crash. He heard pounding. He shoved the door open, terrified at what he would find. The two women stood on either side of the desk. Summer Ann's face was scarlet with anger. A stapler was clutched in her fist and poisoned to be th er, poised to be thrown. Abby held her ground, though. Her eyes were large with alarm. The telephone and one of Chase's frames lay on the floor near the wall behind her. Broken glass with frayed phone cord were proof that Summer's wrath. Summer, put that sta stapler down, Chase ordered. Under different circumstances, the order would have been rather funny. Chase, Summer said with relief, thank God you're here. This crazy woman came in making all kinds of threats, saying I told her crazy things about you and Willie. She's nuts. She dropped the stapler and started around the desk to him. Chase stood, shook his head. Summer, I heard the whole thing. Summer's eyes widened and then narrowed again. She's lying. Summer, he said, I heard everything. I did it for you. I did it for us. She came to him, clasping his arm. You know we were meant to be together. He shook his head again. Summer, go home. I want you to read a little bit of that yourself. Page 301. Summer Ann's words came back to her. You should grow up. Despite Summer Ann's other lies, that had been the honest truth. Abby did need to grow up. She had changed since high school. Why on earth wouldn't everyone else have changed too? That fact was so obvious, so apparent, and yet she had missed it. Some scientist she was. Next paperclip, page 321. That's right. Summer Ann's voice filtered into the brain. Chase can't write. He can't, he can't read. So tell me, what is a woman with a doctorate in biochemistry to do with some illiterate guy? I mean, after all, the great sex, he's lost its appeal. And that's when the, they finally, like, turn the tables and Summer Ann is definitely not ever going to have a chance with Chase again. But, well, Abby, because he's embarrassed by this. He can read, Ellie said defensively. That's her sister. Her dark blue eyes brimming with tears. Then she amended that statement. He can read some and write a little, too. He's severely dyslexic. And you taught him to read? Suddenly everything was making sense. Ellie's relaxed demeanor with Chase, his knowledge of her cooking skills, and, of course, what she read. A little, Ellie said. It's difficult and frustrating for him. He can do it, but it's very slow. He tries so hard. She started to cry. Abby hugged her sister, and she felt like crying, too. For the boy who had looked so alone at graduation, for the guy who wore a relaxed smile when he must have always been on guard, and for the man who's always been wounded, so wounded today, with his pride horribly injured. Where is he? Ellie sniffed. I don't know. Page 329. He should have known that Summer Ann wasn't going to take being fired without a fight, but he never believed she would go this far. She'd known about his dyslexia for years and years. It was one of the reasons she dumped him for the college boy. She wanted someone who was going to be able to make a good living. She wanted someone she could be proud of. We're moving on. Page 339. I guess I learned to be forgiving from this guy I know. He forgives easily, and I think that makes him quite amazing. He was thrilled at her words, but he couldn't truly believe that she was here for him. Not after the way he ran off. Did you come back for the reunion, he asked, trying to sound conversational. She frowned, and then an amused smile curved her lips. She had such amazing lips, according to Chase. <laughs> she had such amazing lips. <laughs> "'No, I am here because I'm living in Millbrook now,' she said slowly." And I also came back to see if this guy that I'm madly in love with has stopped acting like a fool. Has he? The jury is still out. I'm sorry. You should be. Not the reply he expected. I shouldn't have ran off. No, you shouldn't have. She was going to make him work for this as well as she should. I didn't, he hesitated to find the right words that wouldn't make him sound so pathetic. I didn't want you to feel sorry for me. He sounded pathetic. 
She didn't seem to notice. She touched his cheek with the fingers that felt like a brush of heaven. I didn't. I felt proud. Proud of the wild, defensive boy who overcame such obstacles to become the strong, intelligent man before me. So you have a learning disorder. I, can, I can't even cook. Not quite the same. You could learn to cook. And according to Ellie, you have learned to read. Barely, his voice was laced with self-diversion. Abby touched his arm, and he could feel her heat through his sleeve. Barely is more than you could do before, but even if you never learned to read another word, I wouldn't care. She moved her hand up to caress his cheek. I have loved you since we were in study hall in the ninth grade, and I'll probably just end up loving you forever. Her words humbled him. He caught her hand, bringing it to his lips. I should have trusted you. She nodded, her cheeks flushed, her eyes heavy-lidded as she stared at his mouth. I expect that you will from now on. Yes, I will, he said, leaning close to her. I promise. And you won't run away? No, never. At least not without you. He leaned toward her more. I love you so much, Abby, step. And then he, I forgive you. She closed her small space between them. Pressing her lips to him, she tasted wonderful. He caught her against him, and they were oblivious to the mass of people around them. They were lost in each other. When finally parted, he whispered, You forgive too easily. Yeah, she agreed. I learned this from the wisest person I know. There's an epilogue, but I want you to read it. And she does have another story that I'm going to be in search of. Probably I'll add it to my wish list. And it's called Wanting What You Get by Kathy Love. So check this book out. I'm going to give it an 8. That's pretty good. 8. Whew. I love books that touch me, that make me laugh, that make me cry, that make me feel the emotion of the book, that the story you can just relate to. And... Uh, you know what they always say about girls with glasses? Rarely do we get second glass glances, right? So, um, but on a happy note, let's all get happy. My sixth grade teacher said that during our uh, sixth grade graduation. Let's all get happy. Um, this tank top right here, I haven't had it on since last year. I'm making progress. This Sunday, I move up to two pound weights, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Had to share that with you. Right now, I've got to go get a workout in. I just had to do this book review tonight. What book am I reading next? I'm already halfway through this one. Of course, it's a small one. So we'll probably do two book reviews next time I see you. This one is called The Bull Rider's Plan. It's a very good book. They're both scared of how um, time has made them see good differences in each other. Because he was best friends with this dude, and... He had this, the best, the best friend had a kid sister that was always in the way and he gave her a hard time. Well, now he's sort of fallen for that little sister, but what's kind of preventing it is themselves. They're scared if they take that leap of faith, if you will. So I'm going to be interested to see how that book turns out as well. And there'll be a book review on that just as any other, my other books. It seems these book reviews go over well. I love you all. Till next time, God bless.